I built something new and I want to talk to you about it today. Uh, that's kind of what we're here for. So um, let me pull it up. Okay, so this is called Dust. Uh, this is hopefully pretty legible. I'll make it a little bigger. Sorry, I'm on a pretty high res screen at the moment. Uh, okay, so what you see here is something called Dust. There's two pieces to this. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and pull up the GitHub dust books slash dust server. And don't you worry, we'll make this nice and big for you too. Okay. So let's talk about it. What, what are you seeing on your screen? So this is uh, two parts. There's a front end on the web built in lit and TypeScript. Uh, lit is a web component framework if you've not used it uh, or are unfamiliar with it. Um, it's, it's really neat. It's really nice. It's pretty lightweight. Everything's native web components. So we can actually look at the markup here and you can see like we have a library page web component. We have an app sidebar web component. We have a dust app web component. All of those fun things. Ooh, that's a weird bug. I have to figure that out. Uh, I have not blown the zoom up on this yet. So, um, and worth mentioning, I'm still working on this. There's still things that will happen. There's still more to be done. So there's two parts. There's the server and there's the client. Uh, I mentioned that the client is lit in TypeScript. The server is also Dino in TypeScript. I know if you're here for Zig stuff, you're going to be disappointed, but bear with me. I think this is really cool. So what this is, is essentially something like Plex for eBooks. And the way that this works is the server catalogs everything. I've got it running on my machine over here. Uh, let's pull this up and blow up the uh, logs for you. So you can see a couple different things, right? So I'm running this locally just for test purposes. Uh, it actually has been running for a while. Uh, so I've got a super secret JWT key and then directories to index my books in. And I'm running this with Dino task dev, but there's also a Docker image for this. And actually the thing I'm going to do after I record this video is run this on my home lab and then probably set up a Cloudflare tunnel. So it's publicly accessible. The goal here is to be able to read all of my DRM free eBooks that I've purchased from uh, humble bundles and other sources over the years. And I want to be able to do those um, any, from anywhere. Okay, so it processes some of these files. You can see that information here. You can see that we found a valid ISBN 13. So we fetch external metadata for that ISBN. Uh, looking it up on Google Books, looking up the author on Google Books. Um, we also use uh, Open Library as well. Um, so if you don't have a Google Books key or you don't want to provide one, we can still do metadata information through Open Library and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, you can see that there's some indexing that happens. This this happens occasionally. It runs every uh, nightly, more or less. Um, so this server's been running for a while. But this server's running on my MacBook. And then this client is available at client.dustbooks.org. There's nothing on the root here on the www. Uh, there will be at some point. But if you go there and you see that it's a parking page, which it is, uh, just throw a client at the beginning of it if you want to try it out. Uh, you don't have access to my server since it's running on my local machine, but the idea here is that you can have multiple servers. You can connect to a server, do different things, sign in, all of that fun stuff, and then you can manage your books. So this test server that I have on my local machine only has three, or sorry, four books. Um, the idea here is that we'll take all like a hundred something books that I have and throw them on my home lab and make it streamable. So yeah, streamable. Uh, Invalid book ID in the URL. Okay, not entirely sure why that happened. Uh, still plenty of bugs to fix. But that's why I want people to use this too, to help me find those. So there's information. If when we are able to pull cover images successfully, they'll show up here. You can also collapse this and just get a better reading experience if you would prefer. Um, this is an EPUB that we're streaming. We support EPUB and PDF at this point. So you can use arrow keys to navigate through them, read your book, all of that fun stuff. Uh, you can keep track of what you're currently reading here, books in progress, average progress, what you've read today, any books that are considered to be stalled, um, just some information on stuff like that. Once you complete a book, they'll show up here. If you have a large library, you might want to wishlist things to help make them easier to organize. You can do that here. Uh, I sync my stuff with Goodreads, so one of the things I'm working on soon is this view on Goodreads. Right now, it doesn't actually do anything. But the idea here is that you can click this and it'll open it on Goodreads so you can mark your progress there or you can mark the book as complete. 
some genres here as well. Uh, we try to self-index the genres if possible. So you can see I've got one in history and three in technology. That seems about correct. Information about the authors. Uh, series is something that'll be coming soon. You can manage your profile for that server if you want, and then your settings, which needs to be implemented. So I need to build that out. One of the things that's interesting is the authentication happens on the server. So you authenticate with each server individually. This client is a single page web app. Everything gets stored in your browser uh, for better or worse, at least at this point. So uh, you can have multiple servers. You can have different usernames and passwords. You can authenticate with any of them. They don't have to, like your username doesn't have to match or anything like that. We manage the JWT token at the client level for every single one of them. And then the server itself is over here as well. So um, I need to pull this out to its own folder or its own repo at some point. The client is in the same repo for now. But uh, the server source is here. So you can see there's information on books, genres, users, uh, all sorts of fun stuff. And this is fairly standard TypeScript. So if you are familiar with TypeScript, maybe no experience with Dino, totally fine. Uh, you should be able to read through this and figure out what's going on. This is, for now, using um, SQLite. So I've been, I guess I'll, I'll reveal another project here. Uh, I've been working on a small embedded database in Zig. Selfishly, I kind of want to use it for Dust simply because it's a database that I've been building and uh, I want to use it in my own projects. Um, we'll see. I might do that. I might swap it out. I might stick with SQLite. It kind of, we'll figure it out as time goes. But I need to finish that database first before I even really start considering that. But yeah, this is Dust. So um, I would love it if people wanted to contribute to this with me. Uh, there's some information eight months ago. Why I need to remove this. Uh, yeah, there's some information here about the project, how to run it. Um, if you want to run the server on Docker, there's some information here. The only, This is up to date too, for what it's worth. The only thing that's not up to date is, um, actually it's not that it's not up to date. It's not included is uh, making this publicly accessible from your own local network. So if you want to do that, you have to figure out your own way to make that publicly accessible. Maybe you run it on a virtual machine on DigitalOcean or something, that's fine too. Um, the other option would be using something like Cloudflare Tunnel to expose that port and that device on your network to uh, you know Cloudflare and let Cloudflare DNS handle routing, which is probably what I'm gonna do for my home lab server. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this project. It's something that I've wanted to see done. And, and in full transparency, I've used some assistive coding tools, some uh, AI tools like Cloud Code to help with this. Um, it's been great. I, I've been able to take something that with work and trying to create YouTube content and then also trying to spend time with my dogs and wife. Um, it's hard to find some of the time to be very productive with this stuff. So tools like Claude have helped me move faster in especially especially in areas that, um, what is a good way to put this? Especially in areas that are more focused on like front end web development, which oddly enough is what most of my background is. So I'm, I'm fairly comfortable with that, but it just, it takes time. Um, and it's, it's not really the part that I want to spend most of the time on. I want to spend more time on the server itself and, and uh, parsing book metadata and um, crawling the file system and all of, all of those fun things. And maybe those don't sound fun at all, but to me they do. Uh, just some random tidbits too. Um, if you're interested in like seeing how to publish a Docker image uh, on tag for a project, um, this might be useful to see. Here's an example of that. Uh, so it is available on Docker Hub as well. So if I go to Docker Hub, blow this up for you so it's nice and easy to see. Uh, yeah, you can see there's Brad Seibert slash dust. So this is the server. Um, let's make that more apparent. But yeah, you can run this and have your own uh, dust server. And uh, one of the nice things about this is that the client's completely separate. So if you want to make your own client, maybe you want to make a mobile app, maybe you want to make uh, some embedded device that uses a Raspberry Pi Pico to um, connect to uh, an e-ink display and do a digital reader, whatever you want to do. You have that ability to make your own client for all of these. Um, just, you know, you kind of have to adhere to the server and its specification.
Uh, I think that's it. I just really wanted to show off that project. Uh, it's something I've been building out slowly for a long time and then very quickly with some assistive coding tools. And um, I'm, I'm happy to finally be able to use it. So I wanted to share that and I hope it's as interesting to you as it is to me. Thank you and have a great day.